at 12.05. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Seven minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Wow, you are going to hear a great interview right now. How can I predict that? I don't have prophetic skills, Robin. Uh, but I do have a book here that I, I just know in advance that you're going to be fascinated with this. Uh, Dr. Nicholas Gura is the guest right now. He is also the author of a book called Divine Wisdom and Warning, Decoded Messages from God. Uh, Dr. Gura, just to give you some background, is a researcher. He studies the ancient system of numerology called, and I'm probably going to mispronounce it. He'll help me out in a second. Gematria is how I'll say it. Uh, he also happens to be a dentist and an engineer. And um, just just looking at, let me just read you a part of what it says on the back. It says, after many years of exploring the deeper hidden meanings that lie behind the words of the world's greatest bestseller of all time, Nick Gura has finally put his years of research down on paper for a book which should be an exciting journey dealing as it does with some of the major questions of our time are the incredible events of our time the fulfillment of divine promises past and of course the book the best-selling book referred to in that is the holy bible which i even have some questions about that so uh i'm gonna stop talking and start asking questions dr nicholas gura good morning doctor Good morning, Larry. A pleasure. What a, what a great uh, book you've written. How, how are you? Where, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Manhattan, New York City. So you're, are you, a st- can I ask you a question? Sure. Here, well, that's my job, right? What, what is the, or if everybody, don't hate me for this question, but I want to ask, what is the Bible? Because some people will say the Bible is the Holy Bible, which is, when I was a kid, I grew up as a Lutheran kid, a Christian kid, so I have this Old Testament and New Testament. And then there's the Mormons, and they have a whole extra book, and that's the Bible, too. And then Jewish people don't have anything but the Old Testament, which is huge, but it's still what they have. And everybody calls the Bible, and the Bible means something different to everybody. So what is the Bible in your world? I mean, when you're looking at numerology and look, looking at decoded uh, at messages that need to be decoded, where do you look? Well, Actually, I look in the uh, the Old Testament. I have not had a chance to look at the New Testament. Um, I'd have to look at that in Hebrew because it, I found that when I when I find Hebrew words and, and phrases, that's where I find the embedded messages. So, in order for there to be embedded messages, somebody had to have been very good at encoding messages. Well, that, that's the question of the book. Are the messages? Two things. First, are the messages random, or were they embedded? Secondly, who embedded them? Was it just some smart people, or w- is it divine? Okay, and, and that's another thing. We, we are always told that the Bible was written by humans, but by divine inspiration. So, technically, it's actually written by God. Exactly. That's the way we understand it, right? So if it's God, then of course he would be an expert at, at encoding messages. But then the next question would be why? I mean, why give us a book? Why give us instructions on how to live our lives and then encode it? Well, absolutely. That's, that's a good question. So the Bible works at many levels. At the, the, um, the simple uh, surface level, it's amazing stories and laws and teachings, and that's why it's been the bestseller, um, I guess since it was, uh, for many years, since it was translated into English, it's been a bestseller every year. There's no book that comes close to it. So at the simple level of just stories and laws and, uh, and teachings, it's a, it's a tremendous story Shakespeare took from it, everyone took from it. Uh, there's, in the Bible, there's incredible stories, yeah, yeah. miracles. So it's an action-packed book, but it also it has other levels. According to um, Jewish tradition, there's, there's something like 70 levels of the, uh, of the Bible. My, my particular work, I'd say, is just one of the 70, but the results of my work are so 
beautiful and powerful that it relates to both biblical topics and also to current events and, and current topics. Okay, so I, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time finding out the background to this, but real quickly, what is the background? How did you get involved with this? Okay, I, I, I was introduced to this originally in the third grade when I entered uh, the Jewish school Ramaz in Manhattan. Before that, my parents were completely uh, secular. I, I don't think I even knew I was Jewish <laughs> until I was six or seven. Okay. But but uh, when I entered the school, I learned, as, you, as everyone learns, you learn the, the letters and the corresponding number to each letter. There's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and the, the letters have values ranging from 1 to 400. They go 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 10. Then they go 20, 30, 40, up to 100. And then they go 200, 300, 400. So that's when I was introduced to Gamatria. But, you know, during school, I liked math and science more. I focused on that. I went to engineering school, as you said, right, right. dental school. Then I traded on Wall Street. I love sports. So I kind of, Gamatria, I didn't really think of for many years. Uh, of course, I continued to uh, to be Jewish, but but I didn't really look at numbers embedded in in, right. in words and phrases. But then, when nine eleven happened, I looked at did the numbers nine and eleven have any meaning, or were they random? And then, when I found, I began to find unbelievable results and and information. I got more and more involved with gematria. What about the uh, the year? If nine eleven means something, then nine eleven happens every year, and every year we don't have that kind of a, of a story. Uh, does two thousand one or the Jewish equivalent of two thousand one have anything to do with it? Well, that's a good question. Why why that year? Um, I'm not sure why in two thousand one we had that event, but I did find that throughout the last really. Uh, over thirty, th over three thousand years, the numbers nine and eleven. So literally, the number nine hundred and eleven, nine one one, is corresponds to tragedies, um, uh, principles like the beginning of warfare. Right. I mean, it it, it 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 corresponds to amazing historical events and principles. The uh, the the month of September was originally the seventh month. Uh, before the Caesars and the Roman Empire. So, and I've always been confused about this. It, it, I don't know what date it would have been. It wouldn't have been 7-11 because they had diff a different breakup of the, of the year in the calendar. But the, but the Caesars, Julius and Augustus Caesar, they added their name to our calendar. So we've got instead of 10 months in a year, we have 12. But in the Old Testament days, we only had 10. So would they have encoded it knowing that in the future it would be the ninth month and not the seventh month? I, I, I assume so. But uh, either way, the, what I found is that the number 911 does correspond to these amazing events throughout history and the principles, like I said, warfare, hatred, so I don't know wow. uh, the details how we got to the ninth month, but we got there. Isn't that interesting? The, the whole thing is fascinating, and I haven't even asked you what gematria means, but let's take a little break, and uh, we, I want to be fair to the book, of course, and let the listeners know what's in the book. So let's take a little break, and we'll do that when we come back. You're listening to WOCA Ocala. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For today, times of clouds and sun with a couple of thunderstorms around this afternoon and this evening. The high today, 89 to 93. And partly to mostly cloudy later tonight, though 74 to 78. Clouds will limit sunshine tomorrow. Look for a couple of thunderstorms, especially in the afternoon. The high, 86 to 90. And for Saturday, clouds and limited sun with a shower and thunderstorm or two around high, 83 to 87. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lunder. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. It's the annoying feeling when you know you wanted to Google something, but you forgot it as soon as you opened the browser. Now you know it's a thing. Google Heimerness. Life is a buffet. We should take from it what we need and leave the rest. Because when we overcommit, we create a lot of stress. Worrying about the future or past pulls you out of the here and now, but a strong citrus scent helps you focus on what's happening right now. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Good credits, bad credits. 
It's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSale.com. Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. License and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer up charge. Undercutting rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. All right, 17 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. This is a fascinating topic. So let, let's just be fair to the book and, and for the listeners. There's no way we're going to get you all the information in the in a radio interview, but the book is called Divine Wisdom and Warning, Decoded Messages from God. It is written by Nicholas Gura up in Manhattan, I think he said uh, this morning. Yes. Nicholas, uh, all right, so let's see. Um, let's define something. Numerology is, is uh, a form of gematria or the other way around? What is gematria? Gematria is the Jewish numerology. It's been around for over 3,000 years and it, it's assigning numbers to Hebrew letters. Each Hebrew letter has a value, and it's easy to, um, you don't need, uh, my whole system, you don't need any computer to verify or reproduce my work. Oh, really? Okay, so, so we would need to know the, the Hebrew version of, of the Bible, specifically what we would, Christians would call the Old Testament, right? Right, you don't need to know any Hebrew to read the book. I have everything translated. But right, 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 right. But, but to actually um, do it yourself, you would need to know Hebrew, and then if you know Hebrew, you basically know the value of the letters. Everyone learns that from kindergarten up. So let me ask you this. When you're looking at 9-11, you sort of know that you're looking for something because you know what happened on 9-11. When you're doing numerology, did you discover things before they happened and said, holy cow, I saw this before it happened? Wow. Well, yeah, I... I, I like, here's an example. I, I noticed early on that um, the phrase, make peace, it's uh, from scriptures and it's also in some prayers. Ase Shalom has a value of 751, and the, and, the, and the letters that correspond exactly to 751 spell hatred of. So, actually, for about seven months, I didn't understand why is make peace and hatred of uh, why is that? Why is why do they have the same numerical value? So I knew enough to know that there must be a theme, a theme for all 751 phrases and words that gives rise to these two powerful choices: make peace or hatred of. Yeah. And and then the story is in the book. But basically, I got a piece of mail from a charity that said that used in Hebrew. It said the phrase was. Um, the world was created, and when I looked at the word for world was created, I, I, um, I saw that it had a value of 751. So immediately I said, okay, that must be the theme. The world was created, I guess, as a test, as a divine test to give us the choice. How do we, how do we interact with the world? Do we promote peace or do we promote hate? And, and then I went to synagogue on Rosh Hashanah, that's the Jewish New Year, and in the prayers was a different, a biblical version of this uh, phrase. It was, the world was created, harat olam. We say this prayer as we blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. And, and I saw that that also had a value of 751, and that corroborated the other modern term for world exists. The world was created to give us this, this choice, this divine test. Wow, that is pretty fascinating. Um, when when you look at that kind of, you know, it almost sounded. I didn't know where you were going, but when you first said it, I thought, well, there are people who hate peace. They don't. They don't want peace. It's, it seems like it anyway. I, I, it, it just seems like that's just the way the world has been for so long. And, and I don't know that it's individuals as much as groups. You know what I mean? We were just speaking to a lady earlier who was from Afghanistan, or her family is from Afghanistan, and, and uh, you know, her family is, is happens to be Muslim, and they're, they're sweet, and they're not part of this whole uh, movement to, to wipe out Jewish people and to wipe out Christian people. They're not, they're not them specifically. There are people across the ocean who are, but mm -hmm. do you know, and, and Hitler, you know, my, my grandparents were German. They had nothing to do with this guy named Hitler, you know, but, but you get grouped into you, you get categorized, I guess, into a group of people because of a few, a few hateful people. Absolutely, and uh, and the book explains actually 
it actually gives an, a psychological explanation. The math of the the math of the word peace provides the a psychological explanation as to why people refuse to make peace. And basically, the 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 reason, and you can probably ask any psychiatrist or psychologist, social worker, and it's that they feel disempowered, they feel weak. And if you look in your life, your our own personal lives, we look you'll see the people in our lives that refuse to make peace absolutely feel weak and disempowered, and to compensate for that, they fight, they hate. It's really wonderful that you have uh, endorsements and quotes from uh, uh, rabbis, because sometimes when a person writes a book to try to explain things, um, they're attacked by other people that say well what qualifies you to do this and then the whole project goes down the tubes but you persevered and that is to your credit thank you thanks very much well and along those same lines you know what i was thinking i was thinking that whenever we try to speak to and like we we've had people on who were astrologers we've had people on who were psychics and and then i'll have people who are you know Religious, and they'll say, "Larry, you're you're playing with the devil." It, it, and people don't like when you mix prophecy, mm-hmm. like modern day prophecy. I guess. I mean, I don't even know how you determine who's a prophet and who's not. I know that some of the people who are psychics are making a good prophet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. uh, you got that lady on Long Island. She's fascinating. I have no idea if she's real or not, but I watch those videos. So, so with that said, the epilogue of your book says, asks the question, what does God say about Gematria? So this is, so you're actually answering that question in the book itself. What do you, how do you, what do you say to your critics who say numerology and, and, and the Bible shouldn't be mixed together? Right. Well, what the critics say is that uh, numerology is, is, and it says this in the Talmud itself. The Talmud's the authoritative Jewish book of law um, uh, that was transcribed between the years 200 and 500 uh, um, after, uh, you know, A.C.E. So uh, they say that you should use it as a spice only occasionally. But what I say to them is um, we haven't been doing it my version of it for like 3,000 years we have a lot of time to make up so that's why I do it I exclusively do it but uh, but really that's the only uh, criticism do you know the one thing that all of the religions seem to have uh, no no problem agreeing on is that there are seven days in a week and that is like one of the very first things in the Talmud is that the creation of, mm-hmm. of creation was the seven days right is there a significance uh, to that yeah, I mean, in the in the Bible, uh, the words the number seven does correspond to completeness and complete. Uh, I um, let's see. Um, I actually I actually have looked a little bit at uh, the different numbers. I believe that um, the word for seventy itself. So the word seven. Well, the word seven also uh, spells the word for satisfied. So there is an an, el- an element that is uh, satisfying about this concept of the seven uh, day week w- work week, but in terms of seventy itself, the word corresponds with right. So I guess it's suggesting that when we get when we get to the age of seventy, that's the appropriate age to uh, to write. I did it a little bit earlier. <laughs> but, but don't tell anyone. As, as a lot of writers have. Yes. I think you're making a. a the uh, ability for people to delve into the Bible, uh, to delve into the uh, uh, Talmud, any kind of books on that plane, a lot more intriguing because sometimes people just don't want to read words. They want to have the excitement of what they may find, and you're providing that excitement. Uh, absolutely. I think that's really, that is the purpose of my work, which is that it's it's great to believe in in whatever religion people believe in they should keep believing in that religion that's fine uh the book explains that that every religion is holy really as long as it follows three uh major principles it it promotes peace promotes acts of kindness and respects the bible and all and all uh, ancient books of of worship and and um the um the 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 book it's my book it it gives it it basically gives us something else other than just belief to uh, instead of just believing in in Jesus or believing in the Bible or believing in God 
it gives us mathematical evidence that confirms that belief. And for many of us, that is it's cool. nice to have a little uh, proof. Well, and, and especially at this era in, in humanity, because somebody 100 years ago may not have even thought this way, you know? But I guess we're... we're I don't know. Maybe we're becoming a little bit more sophisticated. I, I don't know. Maybe that's just me thinking that. Well, do, you know, speaking of Jesus, we the Christian people believe Jesus was is the Messiah. He the and he's the salvation of humanity, and and he's coming back. The the Jewish people, the way I understand it, say he didn't get here yet. He's still to come. So when he gets here, we're both right. We say, hey, there he is. Yeah, right. We knew. <laughs> do, do, is there anything actually that you've discovered that shows that? I mean, what what does it say? Well, my work shows that uh, it answers the question, was Jesus actually a messenger from God? And it answers it as, he is a messenger from the God of Israel. I actually, uh, my work does not uh, address uh, whether or not he was the Messiah, but for certain, it, uh, it shows beautiful messages that show that he was a messenger from God. It explains his purpose, which, uh, according to the math, is to spread the commandments and Bible to, to the rest of the world. The Jewish people um, were present, according to tradition, the Jewish people were present themselves at Mount Sinai when the, when the Bible was received. So the Jewish people got the Bible, but the rest of the world did not. And Jesus has done a tremendous job in bringing the commandments That's, and the Bible to the rest of the world. Boy, and you've said it much more eloquently than I have, but I thought the same thing. I thought, where would Europe be right now because Europe was not Jewish. Yeah. I mean, it would be all Vikings and 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 and, and plundering. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, weren't they all very uh, brutal? Yeah. Yeah. They were grabbing yeah. women by the hair and, and wearing horns on their head and all that. Yes. Right. So, Absolutely. So. Which is probably why they've hated Jews for bringing uh, and they hate Israel because uh, the Jews in Israel has brought the the laws and the Bible to the to the world, including to Europe. And uh, I think. You're right. Europe, uh, in particular, does resent that. And to teach kindness uh, to the children as soon as they're born, to bring them up in some form of a religion that is respectful and peaceful to others, is to be commended. Is, is America mentioned in the? I mean, do you? Do, is there anything about this part of the world? Uh, the whole. Uh, uh, yes, I found that the number three fifty six, which is uh, the numerical value for America, when you write it with Hebrew letters, I find the spelling from the uh, an official Hebrew dictionary, and the number three fifty six does represent America, and it gives us the um, the principles. And it seems I've done a few hours of work on it. I didn't put it in the book, but I I've mentioned that three fifty six is America. I mentioned that two eighty one is Russia. And uh, Russia, it, the, the, the exact letters that correspond to the numerical value of Russia uh, show that Russia has uh, different futures available to it, including um, glory, healing, and ashes. And it's, oh. they have the free, they have the free oh, will wow. to pursue, to pursue uh, their future. Uh, Dr. Gura, thank you for being on the air with us today. I have a copy of the book. I know we have a listener who wants this one. Call us if you want it, 622-9622, Divine Wisdom and Warning, Decoded Messages from God. Uh, the rest of us have to go buy it. Uh, I've got like five seconds. <laughs> we'll, we'll put the website on our site. Dr. Gura, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Larry. You're welcome. Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. Five people have been found stabbed to death in Inside a suburban Tulsa a home. A 16-year-old and an 18-year-old are in custody in what police in Broken Arrow are calling a homicide investigation. Broken Arrow Police Sergeant Thomas Cooper says officers were called to an address late Wednesday night. When the uh, officers arrived, it was still a uh, active scene. The suspects were apprehended just a short time after the original officers arrived. Two children were also found still alive. Fox Radio's Tanya J. Powers. The defense secretary makes his first visit to Iraq since taking office. Secretary Carter will be meeting with Iraqi officials there to talk Talk about fight against ISIS and U.S. troop training. Fox's John Huddy. A federal hearing set for next week for the accused Charleston shooter and the number of people looking for first-time jobless help last week plunging to the lowest level in nearly 42 years. Fox News. We report. You decide. Yeah, let me guess what you want. You want a truck where safety is first and foremost. One built with a high-strength military-grade aluminum alloy body that's up to 700 pounds lighter. 
that handles better than ever, that stops quicker when it has to, and has the government's highest overall safety rating, five stars, on all four sides, for every cab configuration. Oh, you want the most towing and the most payload, too, right? That about cover it? That's all you want. Everything? Okay. You want the long bed or the short bed? This is the Ford F-150, and this changes everything. Towing when properly equipped with available 3.5-liter EcoBoost V6 4x2. Payload when properly equipped with available 5.0-liter V8 4x2. Class is full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds GVWR. EPA estimated fuel economy rating of 19 city, 26 highway, 22 combined MPG, 2.7-liter EcoBoost V6 4x2. Actual mileage will vary. Government five-star safety ratings are part of the U.S. Department of Transportation's new car assessment program, safercar.gov. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. Ah, ouch. Does pain have you glued to the couch? Yes, unfortunately it's true that every year we must get older, but that doesn't mean we have to deal with pain in our back, knees, or shoulder. If your muscles and joints are sore, don't worry anymore. Come get acupuncture from me and you'll be pain free. Acupuncture starts as low as $35 at a Better You Healthcare. Call me, Dr. Erica Olstein, at 615-5566. Stop your pain from driving you insane. Hi, Danny Warfel here. Get moving with Florida Credit Union's fast and easy loan approval process. Let Florida Credit Union start up a new car loan for you today. No more waiting, hassles, or stop signs. You can even apply online. With a strong financial team behind you, you can enjoy great rates and fast approvals. It's all about personalized service and a streamlined process. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9:30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. That was the sound of a tree falling. It could be your tree. You're going to have it trimmed, but never got around to calling Pride Tree Service. It could have fallen in a field, and now all you have to do is call Pride Tree Service, and they'll have it quickly out of the way for a great price. But don't wait until the tree falls. It may not fall in the field. It may hit your car, your house, or worse. So call Pride Tree Service today and avoid all those headaches before they happen. Pride Tree Service, 840-0750. That's 840-0750. Putting the local back into radio. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. W-O-C-A News. Variety. Information. Now. Keep your arms and legs on the inside at all times. W-O-C-A. Your source for the number one sports weekend. Fox Sports. Only on 96.3 FM. 1370 AM. Proceed. 